Welcome to Bible Study with the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. I'm glad you've chosen to join us. This is part six in a weekly video series where I'm speaking about sites in our American faith heritage that I have visited recently, like presidential museums, Plymouth, and today Martha's Vineyard. As we talk about these sites in our history, we also want you to be aware of other video opportunities for Bible study available on our YouTube channel, Facebook page, and church website, as well as video recordings of our weekly Sunday morning worship services. If you'd like to find out more, you can visit eppchurch.org. As we begin this, our study number six in this series, please join me in prayer. Creator God, this day and always we are grateful for the ways you have allowed us to worship you, to preach your word, to receive the gifts of your Holy Spirit, to be equipped as disciples, to reach out in your name, to baptize others in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to gather around the word, to gather around the table, to gather around the font. We thank you, Lord, for opportunities for evangelism, mission, outreach, education, worship, and fellowship. As we look at scripture, as we reflect upon the way those here on the American continent have lived out their faith, as we're aware of our past, our present, and our future call as disciples, guide us through your holy word, through the presence of your Holy Spirit, through the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ, and through the realities of who you are as the author of all truth, so that we may best reflect your glory into this world now and always. Hear us now, respond to our prayer, and allow us to better understand who we are meant to be in your image. We ask this all giving thanks in the name of Christ our Savior. Amen. Today I want to retell a little bit about my summer day trip to Martha's Vineyard. So my husband, my daughter, and I took the ferry out to Martha's Vineyard. You can only get there by plane or boat. We, of course, just bought a ticket and got on the normal passenger ferry. We are not the elites who took our yacht or private plane, but some do to the island. There are many people who go to the island just for the day as a tourist, maybe for vacationing for a day or two, or who work on the island and take these daily ferries back and forth to the mainland. When we were in Martha's Vineyard, we of course did the touristy things you're supposed to do. We allowed our daughter to try to grab the brass ring as she went around on the world's longest continually running carousel that is there, the Flying Horses Carousel at Martha's Vineyard. We walked the shops on the main street. We had some lunch. We had some ice cream. We bought some postcards. My daughter went swimming in the waters that they filmed the movie Jaws in. And we enjoyed what was a beautiful day in Martha's Vineyard this past July. But also, one of the stops we made was to the Martha's Vineyard Camp Meeting Association. Now, the Camp Meeting Association is not unique to Martha's Vineyard. There are Camp Meeting Associations around the globe, including one that's very famously kind of close to our congregation here in Ocean Grove, New Jersey, not too far from us in Elkins Park, Pennsylvania. But if you're not familiar with Camp Meetings, you should visit the one there in Ocean Grove or maybe even Martha's Vineyard or other ones around the country, and you'll get a kind of a flavor of what evangelism looks like across generations. So for the camp meeting there in Martha's Vineyard, it started as an annual event. One day a year in the mid 1800s, a preacher would show up, kind of build a little platform to stand on and invite people to gather around and listen. And then the preaching began, a full day of preaching and Bible teaching and hymns and prayer with the goal of religious fervency, a revival, a refreshment of people's faith and encouragement to move forward especially in places like Martha's Vineyard, which was a small settlement at the time, didn't really have an established church or congregation, but there were Christians living there. And it was a way to kind of restore the energy of a Christian disciple in the absence of a regular weekly congregational setting. Well, on Martha's Vineyard, the Methodist Camp Meeting Association did a really good job. A couple decades after they started meeting, they added fireworks as part of the camp meeting annual gathering. So people came to see the fireworks and then also heard the gospel. Then they established a formal place to meet, not simply a makeshift kind of platform or tent, but they actually built a wooden structure that still stands there today, over a hundred years later. 
And it's a place of gathering with a platform, a raised kind of stage for the preacher and choir and other leaders to be on, with wooden chairs for those in the congregation to gather under this covering, but open sides to the open air. And then people also get picnic blankets or lawn chairs, and they sit on the grass surrounding the tabernacle structure where this camp meeting occurs. There are now also little cottages that have sprung up in a little circle of a community around the tabernacle. They started as temporary tents, just when the revival would happen once or twice a year. Then they turned into more permanent cottages. Now they are colorful with beautiful front porches. You can own one or you can vacation in one. And that allows you to sit on the front porch and be able to see and hear what's happening within the tabernacle in the camp meeting and hear the preachers from your very front porch. So now the Camp Meeting Association has grown beyond this once a year kind of nomadic temporary setting to a permanent congregation of the United Methodist Church. They've built a formal church structure, a chapel there that has weekly Sunday morning services and a pastor. When they do gather in the tabernacle for a camp meeting type event, there are guest preachers who are not always clergy and sometimes are even clergy of non-Christian backgrounds. When we were there, Senator Warnock, who's now running again for his Senate position, had been the most recent preacher on a Sunday morning, and the coming week was going to be a Buddhist priest. So they open up now this tent revival gathering to not just Christian charismatic preachers, but anyone who might have something to say to the benefit of the community at large. So distinguished people are invited in to speak. It's almost like a TED Talk series now for those eager and open to Christian doctrine as well as embracing the diversity of spirituality and morality within our American culture and leadership. So when we were there, we noticed that there is a free will offering box when you enter asking people to make a donation if they choose to sit and pray. You can sit and kind of take in the architecture around you. You can walk the community and see the little houses with their beautiful architecture and colorful front porches. Many of these houses have people sitting on the front porch who were saying good morning and interacting with tourists who were just walking the island for the day. So the tent revival movement is not unique to the camp meeting in Martha's Vineyard. Starting in the mid-1800s, it was brought to the United States by English and Scottish reformers, even some Presbyterians, who thought it was a good idea to kind of revive Christianity. Now, we kind of think of Christianity today as needing a revival. Of course, post-quarantine, post-pandemic, we need to revive our churches. Maybe when you were a young person in your church, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years ago, however long ago that was, there was talk of a need for revival, refreshment, or get people back in gear, re-energize the church, plug it back in, get its batteries charged. Well, that's not a unique feeling. Christians in the United States felt like that in the 1840s, 50s, and 60s, 150 some odd years ago. And they thought it was time for revival. So there were these tent meetings, or camp meetings that occurred, where a very charismatic preacher would come into town, make connection with local congregations, call all the churches, the Lutherans, the Methodists, the Episcopalians, the Presbyterians, the Congregationalists, everyone to a central location, and all their congregations, and all their choir members. And they would lead a full day church service with preaching and music and prayer time and fellowship and altar calls. This religious fervor would envelop the community. And the goal at the end was then to send everyone back to their own home church re-energized. And anyone who had come as a seeker, maybe who didn't have a church home, now knows the Lord and having given their life to Christ can connect with one of these local congregations and become a part of their ministry. It was exciting. Now we're talking 175 years ago exciting. It happened right here in our neighborhood in Abington Township. We know that our church, the Elkins Park Congregation, is a child of the Grace Presbyterian Church of Jenkintown, which is a child of the Abington Presbyterian Church, which, when it celebrated its 300th anniversary a few years ago, reenacted a tent revival as part of its heritage and history. So it's not unique to Martha's Vineyard. It's not unique to Methodists. It's not even unique to the 1850s. There was a time even before that where there was this idea of nomadic, kind of circuit-riding pastors who came into a town as missionaries 
to pump some energy into the ministry already happening there with the clergy and laity who were settled in that community, giving them kind of a boost to their ministry, kind of injecting some Holy Spirit energy. So the camp meeting in Martha's Vineyard started out that way with a few people that were on the island and then with the tourists and summer employees that came as the population booms in the summer months and kind of wanes in the winter months. Now it continues to be a place of intrigue and debate and dialogue, engagement with moral and ethic leaders in our country, engaging with religious leaders of every kind of background and flavor imaginable. Still centered though, on this principle that the Methodists first form there, that there needs to be energy behind our purpose in life. And hopefully that purpose is to be a follower of Jesus Christ. So when we think of this camp meeting, we might also think of, well, what is our life like today? Do we have any examples of a camp meeting or revival? Probably the one that's most you know, pictured in people's memories and minds are the revivals that the Reverend Billy Graham offered recently. So within the last 50 years, this history of Billy Graham having stadiums filled of people, thousands upon thousands of people, but he would call together local churches, local missionaries, local pastors, local church choirs to partner with him. So at the end of this revival, this charismatic time of preaching and worship, song and gathering, he would then send them out to the local churches. It wasn't follow Billy Graham and follow him off to his next place and he's your leader. No, Billy Graham directs you to Christ and the local congregation fosters your discipleship journey. That's the purpose of the Camp Meeting Association in Martha's Vineyard, in Ocean Grove, wherever else it gathers. And a lot of these locations are meant to be destination places, places you pilgrimage to, to refresh your own faith. So the congregation at the small chapel, the United Methodist Church there in Martha's Vineyard, does have steady membership. But then whenever they hold an event in the tabernacle, that small membership in a sanctuary smaller than ours turns into this big outdoor event where thousands of people gather to hear and be in the presence of one another and the Holy Spirit's powerful presence. So I would encourage you, if you haven't had the opportunity, to look out there for an opportunity for revival. Maybe it's going to a contemporary Christian music concert. Maybe it's going to a local revival. Maybe it's going to the camp meeting in Ocean Grove or Martha's Vineyard or somewhere else. Maybe it's simply just looking up videos online of Billy Graham Evangelistic Association gatherings and hearing that powerful voice, hearing that amazing music, witnessing thousands upon thousands of people coming down the stairs in an arena to the floor to the, respond to the altar call to give their lives to Christ as Savior. It's not unique to do that today. It's not unique for Billy Graham to do it. It wasn't unique in the 1840s and 50s for Martha's Vineyard to start doing it. It wasn't unique when our religious ancestors did it here in the Presbytery of Philadelphia some 300 years ago. The need for revival is present in every generation, in every time and place. For those of us who've been Christians our entire lives, it's good to recharge and refresh our faith. For those who have fallen away, it's good to remind them who their Lord and Savior is. For those who have yet to know the Lord, it's great to join a ministry in a church where there's excitement, is enthusiasm, optimism, and hope, not where people kind of feel stuck. So this encouragement from a camp meeting association is to understand the local church is valuable and important. The people you worship with and the family of God in your local congregation are put in that time and place for a reason in God's plan. But it's okay every once in a while to inject some new ideas, some religious fervor, some excitement into that with a guest preacher, a guest missionary, an opportunity for partnership with other churches in your community. We do this well at Elkins Park, partnering with other churches for Vacation Bible School, for hymn sings, for services like Ash Wednesday and Monday Thursday and Good Friday and Easter Sunrise, for our different hymn sing events and other opportunities for leadership training and the list could go on and on. So thank you to our congregation here for doing this so well. We need to be aware of opportunities for excitement, partnership, revival, and then applying that charisma, that prophetic witness, that energy, that spirit-led hope to the ministry right in our location, to our immediate congregation and neighbors. I want you to hear these words of inspiration that gave birth to the 
movement that became the Camp Meeting Association in Martha's Vineyard and elsewhere. Hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some still doubted. Then Jesus came to his disciples and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I encourage you to be aware of where you find refreshment, revival, and energy in your walk with Christ. If you're feeling heavy or tired or stuck, let other Christians know so we can pray with you and gather around you and work together to revive and refresh your faith. Find a local congregation to worship with. Plant yourself with the family of God. Invest your time, energy, talents, imagination, love, presence, finances, all that you have into the work of that local church so that together we can best reflect the body of Christ. Thank you for joining me again for this part six in our series on American heritage and reflections on scripture. We will get together again next week for our next video. You are invited to worship with us here at the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church every Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. in person or you can find a rebroadcast of our worship online. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.